Yep, there's a reason I quit art. Hey guys, it's me, Control here, and welcome back to another Minecraft mod review. Now the mod I'm using today is the Panaclecraft mod for Minecraft 1.5.2, and this adds a whole host of new items into your game which are really awesome to go ahead and play around with. Now I'll start you off with the paintbrush. So as you can see in my hand at the moment, I'm holding a paintbrush, and the ha these have two crafting recipes. I don't want to go over them all because they're all really long and it would take ages, uh, but to craft a paintbrush you basically get a stick, and put a piece of white wool on top of it, and it will give you the thick white paintbrush, which I'm holding at the moment, which obviously you can colour in more at the same time. Or to get a thin white paintbrush, uh, you basically put a stick with a feather, and that will only give you a one pixel width when you are drawing on here. So to get a coloured paintbrush, which obviously you need, uh, you need to go ahead, fly over to your crafting table, or maybe walk if you're not as badass as me, uh, but grab your paintbrush, put it in your crafting table with a die, and then it will give you that coloured paintbrush, which makes sense. Now you can go ahead and re-dye it, so if I was to put this back in here and put blue in, it would actually merge the colours together, so blue and pink, I don't even know what colour that would give you, I haven't done art in ages, but you can merge colours together to get you all sorts of different colours, so you can draw really amazing paintings if you're better at art than me. Now the canvas that we have here, basically you can put it on every single block there is, except glass and all the things that are picky, uh, like that and leaves, uh, but you can go ahead and put it on pretty much every block and then you can paint on it. So if I go ahead and grab just one canvas now, um, it's only a one block width and if you get more, you can paint uh, more as you'd expect. So as you can see, I can put one there and then I can join it all up if there wasn't a block in the way, but as you can see, that would work. So you can choose how big your paintings can go. You can have really, really huge paintings. Now, as you can see, you can't put it on the top of the blocks, uh, which would be actually quite nice if you could just fly up, look down, and have a humongous painting beneath you. Uh, that would actually be really, really awesome. Uh, but you can only go ahead and put it on flat things like this. Now, if you hold the paintbrush, as you can see, you get a tiny... Let's just press F1 so you can see that better. Well, that really didn't help. Uh, but as you can see, by my crosshair, there is a tiny little pixel which moves around. So unfortunately, this isn't really a free-running thing. Um, as in Minecraft, always there are going to be squares. Uh, but you can just go ahead and paint around like this. Now, you can use a white paintbrush for a rubber. So as you can see here, this is a thick white paintbrush. But it only looks like it's going to um, remove one block wide. However, it is bigger than that. I'm not sure why the little box isn't bigger, but that's just how it works. Now what I found really useful is if you install Optifine at the same time as this mod, you can zoom in and get extra precise, which you can probably see didn't really help me that much, seeing as my art skills are just so bad. Uh, but really in this mod you can just go ahead and draw whatever you want, uh, you've got all millions of colours, and you can just design your own paintings, which is great because in Minecraft at the moment the paintings are a little bit lacking. Now, moving on, I have a nice sign over here, Les Chests. My French teacher will kill me if she saw this. So would my art teacher. Um, but as you can see, we have five chests over here. Now, I'm trying to find something I can hold in my hand, which doesn't look really weird, which is kind of hard. I'll just go ahead and hold a creeper head. I mean, close enough to not weird. Uh, we have five chests. Now, you're probably just thinking, boring old chests. And they're really not. These, I don't think, should be really cool chests. They're more like crates. You can go ahead and right-click on them and you can open them, and you can just throw things in them. So as you can see, just lob in some creeper heads, and then you can go ahead and close it. If that would be as nice as to work, please. Uh, there we go, so you can close it, and then you can open it again. Your creeper heads are still there. You can just jump in and get out your creeper heads if they want to come out. As you can see, this chest sometimes isn't perfectly practical, uh, but all these chests basically work the same way. Now, these are crafted basically the same as a normal chest, but in the middle of each row, instead of a wooden plank, you use the type of wood that you want. So there would be birch, there would be birch, there would be jungle, dark wood, whatever that's called, and oak wood. Okay, so here we have the advanced chest. Now if you right click on this, as you can see, we have a huge inventory here, uh, so you can put tons and tons of items in, and down here we have an upgrade box. Now, the upgrade box is actually pretty big, but it's kind of weird, seeing as you can only slot three upgrades in. There are only three upgrades in this mod. Um, you can't put anything else in uh, except these three things, and you can't put more than one of these things in either, so it's kind of weird. Now, the three upgrades are the collecting upgrade, 
are the unbreakable upgrade and the private upgrade so you can probably already guess what they do now the collecting upgrade basically is if you just throw something out um, instead of uh, let's just say you can just drop something by your chest and the chest will automatically pick it up for you which is kind of handy uh, it also works out for some reason when I'm doing stuff in chests something always ends up falling out of my inventory somewhere uh, but this will go ahead and pick it up for you which again is kind of nice now the radius on this isn't actually very big, uh, which I think is a bit annoying. So as you can see, if I drop these guys here, they won't go into the chest. They have to literally be right next to the chest, which I think is stupid. Uh, maybe I was thinking if you put more than one collecting upgrade into your upgrades box, it could increase the radius of how far you can collect from. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So next we have the unbreakable upgrade, which you can kind of guess what it does. It stops other people from getting into your chest and... No, so next up we have the unbreakable upgrade which basically stops people from destroying your chest uh, now this works with TNT or people just trying to hit it with an axe uh, which is kind of nice especially if you're on a server and your chest is in a place where it gets blown up a lot I don't know does that happen to you it doesn't really happen to me very often uh, but it basically stops people from destroying your chests and then lastly we have the private upgrade and the private upgrade is especially uh, useful as I said on a server so it stops other people other than yourself from accessing your chest now as you can see here we have a nice box up here and this allows you to choose who can access your private chest so obviously at the moment I've set it so control shift creates and the tub and FJ can get into my chest uh, but if I go ahead and change this so let's go cl click on remove hold on you need to type the name first I'm really not good at this type in the name click remove and they will be taken off the list so as you can see now it's just me uh, but if I go ahead and add somebody else let's just add sky the kid rs and add him as you can see if I click list now um, the only people who can access my chest are me and sky does minecraft which is kind of fun to play around with especially if you've got valuables in your chest I mean that happens to me quite a lot now over here we have something random and this is a cannon now I'm really sure really not sure why this is in the game uh, but basically what you can do you can choose uh, the strength of your cannon so let's go ahead and put it down to seven and plop in your creeper head or whatever you want to fire and then it will get thrown across the direction that the cannon is pointing now you can go ahead click on the cannon and change the direction that it points um, it takes a lot of clicking uh, but you can go ahead and change it to a different direction now you can see it's aiming more over there and you can change the height as well so if you go ahead and point it more upwards you can then go ahead and load it with your fuel as you can see it's now gone over there if you turn the strength all the way up I'm not entirely sure how high it's gonna go seems to stop at 20 uh, let's just put our creeper head in there and the creeper head will fly off now as I said not entirely sure what point there is in this can't really do much with it I'm just wondering what will happen if we put some TNT in it I'm hoping it will light it but as you can see it didn't which is kind of boring I don't know why it does that uh, it'd be much more fun if it lit the TNT at the very least or made whatever item you threw explode or impact anyway now here we have the chest table now kind of boring let me just make it day before I go ahead and explain it though so time set zero and as you can see we have a mini chest table it looks really kind of well done as you can see everything looks rather realistic except possibly um, the knights which kind of just look like a question mark uh, but the way you play this is you right click on it and then it opens up a chess GUI now the GUI isn't the best but as you can see it gives you an option of what you can click and where you can move it so I'm just gonna go ahead and play a mini game of chess unfortunately there isn't a computer GUI so you have to play against yourself uh, unless you're on a server obviously so that could get a little bit boring at times uh, but if you're on a server as I said that'd be fine so if I go ahead just go over here I'll show you why this isn't the best GUI as you can see I've checkmated him now um, but it doesn't say game over anything which is kind of annoying so next up we have the advanced sign now if you right click as you can see you have a lot more kind of options than you usually get with a normal sign uh, firstly you see you've got copy and paste so you can paste things in um, and I just pasted loads in. I didn't mean to do that 
but also over here you can change the amount of lines that you have. Now this goes up to 32, which as you can see is very very small text, but then you can also go so there's only one line, which again is very very big text. Now that's useful for when you're on a server and you really want your thing to get read. You can just go ahead and do that and go away, and you've got a sign which says hi, very big. Now, the next thing we've got is a sign edit tool, and that, again, is useful because you can right-click on your sign, and it will allow you to edit it without having to break it, which is very needed in Minecraft. I always end up breaking my signs and retyping them, and it does take ages. Now, again, we have a few more buttons. We have this button, uh, which is a kind of weird button. Um, it doesn't really make much sense. It's something to do with the color, but basically, uh, you click this button, and press a color really quickly after clicking that button and then you can type so four is what i just pressed and it gave me red seven is this weird gray um let's, hold on let's see what nine is and nine is this weird blue and i'm pretty sure a is an admin color so if you click a a is bright green that's not what i was expecting but as you can see you can get loads of different colors which is really fun to play around with especially the boring signs in minecraft they're a bit dull at the moment. Now to craft this sign edit tool, you just get a sign and put a feather next to it. It's nice and simple, and it'll give you your sign edit tool. So next up, we have a broom, and there is no easy way to break this to you. You cannot fly on this broom. I mean, it'd be amazing if you could, but this is just an ordinary broom for sweeping things up. Now the way this works is if you hold right click, it will suck things in in a radius of uh, six blocks. And seriously, if you're thinking something weird then, you have a dirty mind. But if you right click, as you can see, the things will literally fly towards you really, really quickly if they're within six blocks. And if they're not, they won't. So you have to right hold, right click even, uh, to get things to suck to you. And as soon as you let go of right click, things will stop being attracted to you. Uh, whereas with the, um, the, va the vacuum, which we have next, let me just throw some more just junk out. Cactuses. <laughs> stupid. Um, if we grab our vacuum cleaner, the way this works, as you can see, at the moment we've got a big red light on our vacuum cleaner. If we right click once, it turns green, and that means it's going. It'd be pretty nice if there were some sound effects, but the things will fly to you. They go a lot faster than they do with a broom, um, but again, it's only six blocks radius, so it's not any bigger. Um, it'd be kind of nice if it was a bit bigger, because obviously the vacuum cleaner you need iron and redstone to make, whereas the broom you just need a few sticks and a bit of wood. So that would be better if the vacuum cleaner had a bigger radius um, than our broomstick. Now, that is it. It's a really good mod. I highly recommend you go and check it out. There's loads of fun things to play around with. Link in the description, as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like and subscribe. Control, signing out.